always raise your fist to truth. This is the story about dangerous UFO cults and murder. This is the story of what happens when someone gets stuck or trapped too deep down the rabbit hole of UFOs and aliens on the internet. There is substantial and supportive evidence that can show that some people get caught or stuck too deep in that rabbit hole. To some, UFOs and aliens on the internet becomes an obsession. An obsession so deep that some are willing to do anything to keep climbing down that ladder. Some people believe that by climbing further and further down that rabbit hole ladder and getting closer to the gatekeepers, those who hold the secrets that they will be given some secret knowledge that others just don't have. I've often wondered about some of the people I've seen or met on UFO Twitter. Many of those people spend 8, 12, or even more hours a day feeding their obsession. And their obsession only grows with each new promise of revelations soon to come. But all those revelations that these so-called messiahs of disclosure are out there promising everyone never seem to come. But they've sure got something new to sell you every so often, don't they? And isn't it funny how they never seem to deliver on the promise of that disclosure soon to come? And what about the people that are selling this delusional fantasy world to people with little or no evidence at times? Do they bear any responsibility for the negative impacts that the obsession with this delusional fantasy world can have on people's real lives? I have witnessed the damage that this unhealthy obsession can do to many people who get stuck too far down this rabbit hole. It can lead to lost jobs, lost marriages, people who have lost their children, people who have destroyed their lives, even killed themselves. And what about the people who stood there taking the money of these people, selling them this delusional fantasy world where disclosures can come any day now? where the government has alien bodies and flying saucers and soon will reveal the truth about it. What responsibility do those people have? When people's lives are destroyed, when marriages are destroyed, when people take their own lives, or when people get so far down this rabbit hole that they lose all sense of reality, that they finally snap and murder those closest to them. 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 These are the true stories of murder in UFO land. Sadly, it happens more often than most people would ever imagine. Even sadder, almost none of the people selling the UFO narrative to the public dare mention this or even acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it.
the further and further we go down this rabbit hole, the curiouser and curiouser it will get. This is Murder in UFO Land. Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back. We are here tonight to continue our Murder in UFO Land series. If you haven't already, please check our main channel. We have the first in the series pinned at the very top of our channel. It is the Christopher Gray story. Now, unlike Christopher Gray story, tonight's story is a little bit different, but still has a connection firmly rooted in UFO Land. And uh, while the alien reptilian Illuminati conspiracy is not so much a UFO cult, but rather a belief system, it contributed directly and was even mentioned in publicly available court records and documents concerning this double murder case. This case is even more disturbing when we realize that the victims were two children. And being a father myself, this case uh, affected me deeply on an emotional level. And I wondered how deep down the rabbit hole do you have to be to suddenly kill your two children, your only children? Disturbing as this case is, it is a perfect example of the dangers that conspiracy theories present especially to those who may not be altogether mentally stable to begin with. So what happened here? Well, what I can tell you from publicly available news reports and court documents is that on a hot and humid Wednesday morning in August of 2021, Matthew Coleman, a surf instructor, loaded his two children, a 10-month-old daughter and his two-year-old son, into his vehicle and headed to Mexico. While there, he killed both of them with a spear gun and disposed of their bodies there in Mexico. But why? According to publicly available records, including court documents, Matthew Coleman believed that both his wife and his children had serpent or reptilian alien DNA, and he killed the children to prevent them from becoming monsters and terrorizing the human race. As I mentioned, the reptilian alien Illuminati conspiracy is not so much a UFO cult, but rather a belief system. But this belief system and parts of it are repeated by many people in the UFO community, including Kerry Cassidy, David Wilcock, most notably, and others. David Wilcock, for example, claims that there are meat wagons and human beings are being eaten by evil reptilian aliens. We have to take a moment to talk about these stories and the proof or lack of proof. I believe that there is a substantial lack of proof of these things. And uh, if we investigate further, the people who are pushing these dangerous conspiracy theories, people like David Wilcock and Kerry Cassidy, if we investigate the sources that they accept and use as truthful sources, the entire stories begin to unravel very quickly. David Wilcock, for example, famously used a man named Pete Peterson who faked his entire biography, giving himself awards from the Russian government, claiming that he worked for the Russian space agency, claiming that he worked for Ronald Reagan and more. But when we do a deep dive into David Wilcox source, Pete Peterson, who by the way, was also the source of some of these reptilian alien stories, we find that Pete Peterson lied about his entire biography, was not who he claimed to be. But David Wilcock accepted his stories anyway, even writing whole books about his stories, milking him for fake stories about aliens to sell to gullible people for years. Kerry Cassidy 
if we look into her sources, we find that she has in the past used a convicted child molester, excuse me, a court-martialed child molester as a source for her fake alien stories, many of them involving reptilian aliens. Kerry Cassidy has also used a convicted murderer who somehow is supposed to be in the secret space program while serving a life sentence in prison. I'm not quite sure how he's going off on space adventures and saving Earth while he's locked up in a prison cell, but this is the sort of idiocy that we get to once you peel back a few layers of deception here and truly investigate where are these stories come from. Well, largely, I have found that many of these stories are coming from convicted criminals who the UFO celebrities like David Wilcock or Kerry Cassidy and certainly uh, David Icke, who is the subject of tonight's story, get their information from. They are so willing to accept information from, let's just say, problematic, less than credible sources that it becomes obvious to anyone, any outsider looking in, that these stories are incredibly problematic. Now, uh, the uh, alien, reptilian alien and Illuminati conspiracy is uh, sort of a mishmash or combination of many different conspiracies. So I thought it important since this man, Matthew Coleman, who murdered his two children, I should say allegedly murdered his two children. He has yet to be convicted of these crimes. However, he is in a prison cell where he belongs, uh, he's had his, in, you know, the indictments filed and awaiting trial. But I suppose, uh, you know, and by the way, he pled not guilty to murdering his two children, whose bodies were found shortly after he was by Mexican authorities. So the first thing that we have to do is examine this belief system, which is a very problematic belief system. And I cannot tell you how many people have asked me to comment on this or research this belief system. And here's what I can tell you. If you dig deeply enough into any subject, there are some things that are factual. For example, there's many strange connections with world leaders and their families. Look up the United States presidents and how many of them even though distantly, were somehow related. So it's easy to see how a conspiracy theory can take root, take shape, take hold, and become accepted truth by people who want to believe. In looking into the Illuminati and uh, reptilian alien and the bloodlines sort of conspiracy, what I have found is that there are some factual Things like the fact that many United States presidents were somehow related, although somewhat distantly in cases, there's still some strange connections. Further strange connections can be found between the English royal family and the presidents of the United States. Look that up. But these conspiracy theorists do what I have previously called the David Wilcox super duper prover maneuver where they give you a piece of actual factual evidence or factual fact, a proven fact, and then they heap on top of it unproven theories or connecting dots that aren't really there or just stories. But first they throw out some, some actual verifiable facts. And I believe that to these shysters who sell this garbage fake information, they believe that throwing out the real, some real facts before they pile on their garbage fake information somehow legitimizes all of what they say. It doesn't. Now we're going to uh, cite fair use. This is a transformative work and uh, we are going to uh, share with you a, a great video that I found by a YouTube channel called Unveiled and the in the description of this video, you can go there and see more from this channel. I was going to make my own video concerning this reptilian alien Illuminati conspiracy, but uh, sometimes it's best not to reinvent the wheel. This is excellent 
and we'll be commenting and uh, using this. Oh, let me do it again. We'll be commenting and using this under fair use, uh, discussing this and using this to educate the public about this conspiracy theory. So let's get into it. Conspiracy theories are everywhere in the modern era. Constantly debated across the media, it seems that everyone has at least one they believe in, even if they may not admit it. But are there some that, for all their apparent ridiculousness, have deadly implications? This is Unveiled, and today we're answering the extraordinary question. Is this the most dangerous conspiracy theory of all? Do you need the big questions answered? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. Increasingly common in the Western world is the strange belief that a race of reptilian humanoids, lizard people, or reptoids has somehow infiltrated the upper echelons of Earth society. Yes, yeah, so the, the basic uh, storyline goes that all of the biggest uh, sort of world leaders are all somehow a part of this great and grand conspiracy. Uh, and they are indeed either it's, they usually say either shape-shifting aliens so they can shape-shift to the form of humans or that they wear skin suits. And we'll get into a little more about where I believe the skin suit idea came from. Um, but it's interesting that some people say that they are shape-shifting and others, still others say that, no, they're wearing skin suits to pretend to be human. These lizards are disguised as humans, as powerful figures like the Bush family, the British royals, Obama, and so on. But they're wearing skin suits or shape-shifting to keep their true reptilian nature. We have it. They work in opposition to the best interests of humanity. A clandestine operation to seize and maintain power, enrich themselves, control us all, and even drink our blood. It's all too easy to point and laugh at the people who believe this theory, but their ranks may be growing. In 2016, polling found that 12 million Americans believe the reptilian humanoid theory. That's 4% of the total population. Many more believe that, contrary to the world of conflict and competition we see with our own eyes around us, some shadowy organization, the Illuminati, for instance, is behind world events. Yes, and it's interesting in that this particular conspiracy theory draws on many already established conspiracy theories. And we have detailed here in the past that uh, many people who want to sell you something in conspiracy land or UFO land, they all, in my experience and observation, they all do this, and that is that they take an accepted conspiracy theory, for example, Roswell. Many, many people believe that an alien spacecraft crashed at Roswell. And regardless of what you believe, what people do is they use an accepted, an already accepted mythology or story like Roswell, and then they build upon that mythos adding to it. For example, the Roswell rock. Suddenly somebody finds a rock that reportedly comes from the Roswell wreckage somehow. They're using the Roswell mythos and then tacking their stories onto the, the Roswell mythos, I believe, because they are aware that many people already believe that an alien spacecraft landed at Roswell. And they use that existing or pre-existing belief by many people to sell their stories or what they have to sell you. I have seen this many, many times, most notably with Roswell. The best example uh, that I can give is Roswell, because there have been many, many stories that were built upon the legend of Roswell. For example, alien autopsy that was built directly on top of the Roswell it was reported to be an autopsy from aliens that crash landed at Roswell in 1947. Alien interview. There's another one. Somebody snuck some tapes of an alien being interviewed out of Area 51, and he was from the Roswell wreckage, and he survived all this time somehow. The Roswell rock, the Roswell slides. That was a complete and total fraud and a hoax by Jaime Musan, well-known collaborator with Third Phase of Fake, Third Phase of Moon. 
they people do this. So I don't think that it is an accident that David Icke and others interwove other conspiracy theories in with this idea that there are reptilian aliens controlling the world. So in this case, they interwove the Illuminati conspiracies. And in some cases, depending on what conspiracy websites you read about this particular reptilian alien conspiracy theory, um, they mix in the Freemasons as well in some places. Silly as it all might sound, conspiracy theories are far from harmless. The reptilian conspiracy theory echoes 19th and 20th century conspiracies that Jewish people secretly control the world's banks and media. This is often called the international Jewish conspiracy and has existed for a long time, popularized by a fabricated text published in 1903 called The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It was exposed as fraudulent in the 1920s, but the Nazis made constant reference to this conspiracy in their propaganda. And it's also important to note that some people believe that David Icke and others are just using reptilian aliens as sort of code word for Jewish people, somehow implying that Jewish people are in control of the world. Another well-known conspiracy theory. Um, take from that what you will. But it's interesting that uh, we have interwoven an, an anti-Semitic element is certainly involved in a lot of what David Icke talks about and preaches. And used it as a way to justify the Holocaust, with Nazi high command alleging that they were acting in self-defense against Jews to protect German society. Nazi Germany certainly didn't invent anti-Semitism, however. Jews have been persecuted for thousands of years so much so that many Jewish holidays revolve around surviving in the face of crimes against them. You can already see the link between these older and more obvious theories and the modern day lizard example, but it's still a complex journey to go from outright anti-Semitism to a theory about reptiles in disguise. Even the most absurd part of the reptilian humanoid conspiracy, the blood drinking, has its origins in anti-Jewish history, just like the rest. Yes, there was once stories that Jews would sort of roam the countryside and grab Gentile children and drink their blood. So a lot of this conspiracy theory is rooted in anti-Semitism. Killian people, Jews were accused countless times over many centuries of sacrificing and drinking the blood of Christian children, which Jews began to call the blood libel. These were often children who had gone missing and whose disappearance it was easier to blame on convenient scapegoats. When children went missing in some parts of England in the 12th century, Jewish communities, already marginalized and distrusted, were the first to receive the blame. The blood libel eventually spread across continental Europe too, embedding anti-Semitism in European society, leading to executions, the establishment of ghettos, and even pogroms. And we can't stress enough that there's absolutely no evidence that any Jewish communities ever committed acts of this nature. As the name suggests, the blood libel is just that, libel, concocted to slander Jews and justify mob violence against them. And yet that lie still persists, even in the 21st century. But why alien reptiles of all things? I believe that uh, many of the this, a lot of this reptilian alien conspiracy stuff started, I, I would say, around 1985, but really started in 1988 or so. And we'll see why I believe I may have located the source of some of the this reptilian alien conspiracy stories. Well, the idea of intelligent reptiles has been common in science fiction for the last century, appearing from time to time in the pulps and even sometimes in the context of a shadowy conspiracy. But the man responsible for the theory today is former footballer and sports broadcaster David Icke, a well-known conspiracy theorist. As well as more or less inventing the lizard theory, Icke also believes that there's a link between 5G and COVID-19, that the moon is an alien spaceship that manipulates us, that the Illuminati are to blame for global warming, and so on. Yeah, uh, Icke's stuff gets really thick, right? And uh, it's interesting that there was a Netflix documentary about David Icke. And I, I want to tell you, if you get a chance, you should watch that uh, because 
that documentary sort of painted David Icke as a very grounded person. And it talks about uh, many things that are very, very easy to believe, but it leaves out all of his most wild, crazy, weird conspiracies. And it almost paints uh, a picture of him as a hero. Um, and I think that was intentional, sort of a retconning of David Icke to a more mainstream audience. But when you really dig into David Icke, and I have, I have a bunch of his books, it's just absolutely ridiculous, wild theories with scant, I would say scant or no evidence behind them. And it is interesting. I believe that there is a hierarchy to the conspiracy land grifters like David Wilcock. He's a big fan of David Icke, I believe, and bases a lot of what he does on things that David Icke was successful saying or doing. Interesting uh, that the, there's sort of a pecking order between the conspiracy land grifters. And um, certainly people copy from more successful grifters. We see that in the case of Corey Good. We've seen that in the case of David Icke for certain. He's been so consistently discredited that as early as the 1990s, legitimate publishers refused to publish his work. As far as the reptiles are concerned, Ike claims that these reptilian humanoids come from the Alpha Draconis star system, more commonly Oof. for all their apparent ridiculousness. Oof. Hold on a second here. I missed my place. I apologize. I wanted to stop it. <laughs> yeah, interesting that... Uh, Interesting that the reptilian aliens that happen to be reptiles just so happen to come from Draconis star system. You know, I think that's a little a little bit too convenient. Reptilian humanoids come from the Alpha Draconis star system, more commonly known as Thuban. This is a real star system roughly 300 light years away from us, but it's been latched onto by Ike because it has a convenient name. In reality, there's no current evidence that it hosts intelligent life. We haven't even found any exoplanets there. More worryingly, Ike cites the protocols of the elders of Zion as a main source for his beliefs. You know, remember, he's citing a source of a book that has been discredited as fake. And we see this very often with conspiracy land characters. They're just unwilling to accept. You know, I have talk to people or seen evidence that people cite things like uh, other people's books, you know, oh, well, this came from Colonel Corso's book, so it's true. No, not really. Or people will cite things like, oh, a great example that I could give is the Wilson Davis documents or notes. Well, uh, they cite this NRO document from Dr. Stephen Greer as proof. But those are completely fake documents as proven by John from the Black Vault, who did an excellent debunk showing that that document was 100% false. So this book is, is a fictitious you know, construct of garbage, and, and Ike is using it to prove his reptilian alien theories are true. He claims that contrary to what the text states, it's really about reptiles, not Jewish people. Again, the protocols of the elders of Zion is forged, something that's been known for a century. It was produced in Russia in the early 1900s, forming the bedrock that the international Jewish conspiracy is based on. However, it was quickly shown to be fraudulent, plagiarizing a French political satire, I agree, among other sources. So why was it disguised and republished in 1903? And for what purpose? Well, much like the blood libel, to find a scapegoat for real systemic issues. First, it was the disappearance of children, but this time it was for the failings of the Russian Empire, which had generated growing unrest. The idea of scapegoating Jews didn't work. In 1914, war broke out in Europe, military losses led to mutinies, and the situation ultimately exploded with the Russian Revolution in 1917. In 1918, less than a year after the Bolsheviks seized power, Tsar Nicholas II and his entire family were executed even though only 10% of the Bolsheviks were Jewish. The protocols were used to blame Jews for the revolution. This is a legacy that Jews still have to grapple with today.
with protocols described by the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum as, quote, the most notorious and widely distributed anti-Semitic publication of modern times, end quote. Over yeah, the and I wondered, uh, what is it, what must it feel like to, um, you know, be Jewish and know that this book has done such incredible damage? And I, for one, you know, I don't believe in book burning or book banning, but in this case, uh, it's something to consider, considering how many people have been murdered over a fictitious, falsified book. Centuries, anti-Semitism had become so rife in Europe and the U.S. that in 1942, a ship full of Jewish refugees trying to flee Nazi occupation was turned away by the U.S. government because of unsubstantiated paranoia that they might be German spies. Not all the people that reptilian conspiracy theorists accuse of being lizards are Jewish, but some of them are. George Soros, for example. And the cultural anxiety around people potentially being something other than they claim has reached a fever pitch in the past. The Spanish Inquisition was founded to persecute heretics among Jews and Muslims who had converted to Catholicism but secretly continued to practice their original faith. Many had converted to avoid violence and expulsion. The Inquisition tortured, expelled, and executed them in their thousands. Shockingly, in 2019, a far-right extremist was even charged with murdering his own brother after becoming convinced he was a lizard person. And by the way, uh, that will be the subject of a future episode in our series here, Murder in UFO Land. More than any other single conspiracy theory, I have found this to be the most dangerous. That's why uh, this YouTube content creator asking this question, is this the most dangerous conspiracy theory of all, is very valid considering I can cite uh, at least four people, four human beings have been murdered over this conspiracy theory. Maybe five, if you were to count Christopher Gray, though I don't think that this particular theory contributed in that case. It could have been one of the causal factors. The man was also a believer in QAnon and proclaimed himself a member of the Proud Boys. What looks innocent at first can quickly prove to be nothing of the sort. Social media is rife with jokes and memes about the conspiracy theory, but it can be dangerous for people who are vulnerable. Critics of the reptilian conspiracy theory label it a dog whistle, coded language that might seem innocuous at first glance, but communicates very specific ideas to people within the intended audience. For example, modern neo-Nazi groups, which still exist and are active around the Western world, use dog whistles to create plausible deniability around their beliefs so that ordinary people don't cotton on to their true beliefs. The idea that lizard people walk among us can seem ridiculous, but the theory, believed by millions of Americans, harkens back to extremely dangerous propaganda linked to the persecution of the Jewish people. Hitler used the protocols that David Icke relies on to kill six million Jews in the biggest crime ever perpetrated against humanity. And that's why reptilian humanoids is the most dangerous conspiracy theory of all. I would argue that this conspiracy theory is the most dangerous of all for many different reasons. First of all, the link and ties to uh, anti-Semitism, to Nazism, to neo-Nazism, to white supremacy, that's very troubling. But also, or equally troubling, is the number of people who have become so convinced of this particular conspiracy theory that they literally murdered people closest to them. And that, of course, is one of the subjects, is the subject of tonight's uh, broadcast. So Matthew Coleman, what can I tell you about this man? I uh, did some background research and digging into him, even watching a bunch of sort of home movies that he and his wife have posted on social media. And it's chillingly disturbing to watch that because they appear happy, they appear normal. Uh, outwardly, there appears to be no sign that this tragedy was uh, coming. A very normal family. I watched them have a birthday party for, I believe it was their son turning two years old. And, and that was shortly before the murder. But privately, a friend 
of Matthew Coleman, who I used as a source for tonight's broadcast um, on condition of anonymity, said that Matthew Coleman had become increasingly withdrawn from everyone, from friends, from family, from social functions, instead choosing to spend most of his time on the internet reading different forums centered around conspiracy theories, and specifically, he was obsessed with reptilian aliens, with rep everyone who talks about reptilian aliens, including Gary Cassidy and David Wilcock. But most of his obsession with this conspiracy theory seems to have been centered around David Icke specifically. Um, and he later mentions David Icke and the conspiracy theories he uh, sort of received from David Icke as a direct causal factor in these murders. I thought it would be important uh, to look at some of the news reports, and I certainly have done that. Uh, so again, we're going to cite fair use. I'll put my fair use banner back up. This is a uh, transformative work and we're educating the public about Matthew Coleman and the murder of his two children involving conspiracy theories pushed by David Icke and many others in UFO land. Um, the, the news broadcasts are chilling in and of themselves. Speaking as a father, you know, I, I just can't, I cannot wrap my own brain here around becoming so convinced in this thing that you would load your children into a vehicle, take them on a trip, and then murder them brutally with a spear gun of all things. Now, any death of a child is tragic, but the violent murder of your own children because you were reading too much conspiracy theories? And I wondered about this man's state of mind, but I was told by his friend that he by all appearances, seemed normal, but somewhat quiet and withdrawn. Uh, he did appear to be uh, preoccupied, like he had things on his mind in the months leading up to the murder, and quiet at social gatherings and events, withdrawn. But there were no real warning signs to this impending tragedy that would end in the death of two children. But let's take a look at the uh, news reports. And then I wanted to spend some time on this man's mental state and how that may have contributed to this. Investigators say 40-year-old Matthew Taylor Coleman drove from his home in Santa Barbara with his two young kids on a mission to kill them so that they, in his words, would not grow up to be monsters. News 8's Kirsten Holmes joins us live with what we've learned about the case today. Kirsten? Hey, I'm here at the San Diego FBI office where in my hand I'm holding the criminal complaint against Matthew Taylor Coleman. This details the gruesome murder of his two young children because he says he wanted to save the world after he was enlightened by QAnon and Illuminati conspiracy theories that he found on the internet. The complaint says that on Saturday, August 7th, Matthew Taylor Coleman took his 10-month-old and 2-year-old from his home in Santa Barbara, California, to Rosarito, Baja, California. The criminal complaint says his wife called police concerned for his safety when he left with their children because he wasn't answering her or other family members who were reaching out to him. But she says she did not believe that he, she, or their children were in danger. While in Rosarito, the complaint says Coleman murdered his children using a spear fishing gun into their chests. Coleman said he believed his children were going to grow into monsters and that he had to kill them after he was enlightened by QAnon and Illuminati conspiracy theories. He says he was also having visions and signs that his wife had serpent DNA and passed that DNA on to his children. The court filing says Coleman believed he was saving the world from monsters. Coleman told investigators that since he didn't have a car seat, he placed his youngest child in a box for the ride to Mexico. And after he had killed them, he discarded the spear fishing gun and bloody clothes near a creek. After investigators used the Find My iPhone app to track him down, 
He was arrested on Monday, August 9th, around 1 in the afternoon at the San Ysidro port of entry. Border officials noticed he was returning to the country alone without his small children, and they noted blood on his Mercedes Sprinter registration paperwork. The bodies of the two toddlers had been found hours earlier that day around 8 a.m. Okay, so I read through this entire criminal complaint a couple of times, and I got to tell you, it is pretty horrific. And this comes just weeks after the children's father, Matthew Coleman, made an Instagram post about how much he loves his family, including those two small children that he has confessed to killing. We have this full complaint up on, on our website if you want to read it at CBS8.com, but I got to warn you, it may not be suitable for all audiences. Back to you. Now, Kirsten, what is next? in this case. OK, so Coleman was in court today and he will be arraigned on August 31st. He is being held without bail, but August 31st is his arraignment. All right, Kirsten, we'll keep track of that and see what happens uh, during the court process. Kirsten live, Holmes reporting live for us tonight. Kirsten, thank you. Matthew Taylor Coleman was an American citizen and so were his two young children. And because the crime happened in Mexico, attorneys we talked with say U.S. FBI agents will be working with Mexican authorities to piece together their case and find justice while each side goes through their own individual legal proceedings. The U.S. can still charge you if you're a U.S. citizen. If you committed crimes against another U.S. citizen in another country, regardless of what happens in the trial down there. Attorney Mark Reichel says this is only the beginning of what could be a long legal proceeding because of the international implications. And there we have it. So uh, this man was arraigned and in, indicted, and he is currently awaiting trial for this heinous act of two children, the murder of his own two children. Um, further, I wanted to... Uh, do uh, some research into this man's mental state. Remember as well that this man has pled not guilty in the murder of his children, but there are no details of what defense he plans to use because there is a great deal of forensic and circumstantial evidence linking him directly to the murders. So I, I am assuming that he will try to plead insanity or temporary insanity as a defense. Um, but it would appear that he was very lucid or in control and uh, aware of his actions and even aware enough that his actions were a crime enough to try to conceal the crime. And that is often used as evidence to convict someone or stop someone from using an insanity defense. If you're insane, you're not covering up the bloody clothes or getting rid of the spearhead of the spear gun you use to kill your two children. But uh, let's hear a little bit more about his apparent mental state and um, again, citing fair use. The tragedy is putting mental health and the danger of conspiracy theories in the spotlight. News Channel 3's Tracy Lair joins us now live. And Tracy, you reached out to the county's behavioral wellness team and a professor who teaches the psychology of conspiracy at UCSB. That's right, Beth. Um, the whole community is saddened by this. And Susan Grimacy with the Department of Behavioral Health says it's going to take time to just understand it. Federal authorities say they spoke to the Santa Barbara father and surf instructor who's accused of killing his two young children. They say he told them that he believed in QAnon and Illuminati conspiracy theories. They say he told them that his wife had serpent DNA and passed it on to their children. Our natural inclination is to get information to help us to better understand a hard to understand tragedy with the thoughts that that will make us feel better with the understanding. The reality is that this may have a lot of questions that can't be answered and we have to learn to be okay with that. Grimacy says if you see someone struggling with mental health or you are, you should reach out. There is a 24-hour access line. You can access it on your laptop or your phone. It's linked to the county website. And we will hear more from Susan Grimacy and also a professor studying uh, those kind of conspiracy theories tonight at 11. And we'll have more with Grimacy at 6 o'clock. Reporting live in Santa Barbara, I'm News Channel reporter Tracy Lair. All right. Thank you for that, Tracy.
Oh, sorry. So I have a few more things to share. One moment. So apparently when he was captured, the police entered the room that he had at the time. And uh, that paints a very disturbing picture of his mental state. Uh, and this is an article, again, we're citing fair use from People Magazine. Matthew Coleman left behind a shrine to his children in a hotel before he allegedly killed them. On the afternoon of August 7, 2022, 21, pardon me, Matthew Taylor Coleman was packing for a family trip with his wife, Abby. Suddenly, authorities say he put his two kids, Kaleo, two, and Roxy, 10 months, into his van and drove away from their Santa Barbara, California home. Crossing the border into Mexico, Coleman ended up in the City Express Hotel in the coastal city of R Rosarito. While at the hotel, Coleman and his kids kept a low profile staying in their room, although one guest recalled seeing a family in the lobby. They didn't interact with anyone. Coleman stayed in the hotel for two days before authorities allege he took Kaleo and Roxy to a nearby ranch and killed them with a spear fishing gun. Authorities say that Coleman left the children's bodies in a remote part of the ranch, but a farmer stumbled across them just hours after they were killed before Coleman was able to cross the border into the U.S. Authorities on both sides of the border were looking for him. Um, a manager helped authorities enter Coleman's room at the City Express Hotel. It had not yet been cleaned by housekeeping, and it is believed that Coleman was the last person inside the room. According to two sources, one in law enforcement and one in the hotel, Coleman's room was cleaned out of all personal effects except for three things. Two stuffed animals sat on a table with a family portrait propped against it. Next to it, a Gideon Bible open to Psalm 127. And by the way, this is a... Uh, Bible verse I'm very familiar with, which says in part, quote, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. The page was folded so that it was the first verse you could see, says a law enforcement force. It may all mean nothing, but it felt like a shrine. It felt significant. According to an FBI criminal complaint obtained by people last year, Coleman allegedly told police he was motivated by QAnon conspiracy theory, which falsely claims former U.S. President Donald Trump was secretly been battling a cabal of Satan-worshipping pedophiles at the highest levels of political power and influence. In a subsequent 30-page search warrant application released earlier this year, Coleman alleged Conspiracy thinking are detailed even more. The affidavit alleges that Coleman was fascinated by conspiracy theories like QAnon and Illuminati and was interested also in Strong's Numbers, an index of every word in the Bible. Coleman allegedly told the agents while he was in Mexico, he had laid in bed seeing all the pieces being decoded like the Matrix and that he was Neo. He said visions and signs revealed that his wife, Abby Coleman possessed serpent DNA. Matthew Coleman mentioned that he was not sure if his wife was a shapeshifter and had passed it to his children and that all things were pointing to the idea that his children have corrupted DNA and it will spread if something is not done about it, reads the affidavit. The affidavit states that Abby Coleman told authorities that she had also researched QAnon with her husband but she said he became significantly more paranoid that people around him were involved in a conspiracy. Coleman has been charged with two federal counts of murdering U.S. nationals on foreign soil. His attorney has not recall, returned people's calls for comment. He has pleaded not guilty, and he is being held without bond. Yeah, so very, very interesting. And I also wondered about the mindset of what makes people believe so strongly in something like this conspiracy theory that they would murder those closest to them. And, you know, I have my own beliefs about that, uh, but it's interesting. I found someone, her name is Pat Brown. Um, she's a criminal profiler that has worked on some very famous cases that you may recall, like the John Benet Ramsey case and others. Um, and she had some interesting insight into people who get into these 
strange conspiracy theories and exactly why. And a lot of her points sort of echoed my own beliefs. Again, I have put her um, information in the description of this video. I encourage you to check out her channel if you enjoy true crime or criminal profiling. She's been covering the Ohio, Idaho murders and uh, many cold case murders as well. I think you would enjoy her channel. Um, and uh, I personally have been uh, really impressed with some of her thoughts on different crimes and the motivation behind the crimes, the psychology of the, of the criminal mind. She's an excellent resource and did a story herself about this. And so this is taken from her video. Um, I, I think you should check her out. She has some interesting insight into the criminal mind being a criminal profiler. It doesn't appear he was in a psychotic state. It appears he knew what he was doing. He took the children, told his wife, it kind of took off with them. And she was upset because he said he was going to take them camping. Now, I'm sorry, but right there, uh, the wife has to know they're not going camping. You don't take kids this age, not a, that child, camping. And she, he didn't take a car seat and put the child in a box. So, I mean, she they're kind of like clues. And then she was upset about that. So off he went and eventually went to Mexico and killed them. Uh, sent some emails back and forth, um, text or text back and forth, sorry, and uh, saying that he was, you know, getting everything straightened out in his head in the worst way. Um, and then you wonder about her, Abby, where, where, what are you doing when he's going into all this stuff? Apparently, according to a friend, she was kind of into this stuff too. And so she was thinking this friend was even part of a conspiracy. So, you know, they were, both of them were feeding on each other and feeding off of each other. And I don't know, maybe he was more extreme than she was, but both of them had a responsibility to take care of those children and not put them in danger. And if if Abby knew her husband was going off the deep end, um, then she had, had to protect the children, which didn't happen. Um, maybe she was going off the deep end with him. I don't know. But the point being, they both made these choices. And I do believe that one of the reasons people make these choices is it's a, it's a desire to be important, to be special. Because sometimes in the world, people feel like they're just getting lost. So they join organizations, sororities, fraternities, clubs, and uh, religions to be somebody special. Because when you join, they say you're one of us. And then to stay one of them, you've got to do all these things, jump through certain hoops, say special words, do special things to stay one of them. And when you do that, you get more praise, you become more special, and that makes you feel good. So a lot of it is either a real lack of self-esteem or a real high level of narcissism where you need a constant feedback of how wonderful and special you are. And being a regular person is not good enough. So you want to believe these things because then if, you, if you're on the inside too, if you believe this particular theory about the lizard people or about uh, QAnon or you believe that whatever you believe, you're the one of the ones that knows better than everybody else. You see, you're special. You're so darn smart. You know, and all those other people, they're 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 falling for the evil people. And you're the one who's smart enough not to fall for it. And that makes you so important and so 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 perfect. You know, you're just you're just brilliant. You're brilliant. So I believe that there's there's a there's a issue with one's own self-esteem or personality, if I say possibly narcissism, a high level that encourages you to go into that that kind of thing. Now, this guy's just a straight up psychopath. Because he's he's the he's the Pied Piper and he knows exactly what he's doing and what he's leading people into as he's making his millions and millions of dollars. He doesn't care about the destruction he's causing. Psychopath. These people don't know. Narcissism, self-esteem problems, don't know. But those poor two children are dead because of what the two of them apparently were into. And of course, he is ultimately responsible for the death of those children. Uh, and now the question is. Does he get an insanity plea because he believes his children had, uh, had, had lizard DNA? Is that what he gets, an insanity plea? Because he made the choice to start believing in things, to have a have a certain set of beliefs. He's He went down that road and he kept going down that road. He made choice after choice after choice after choice till he decided for himself, this is what I believe. Did he have to do that? You know, do you, do you just give him an insanity plea and let him go sit for a year and, and say, oh yeah, boy, that, that was stupid. How did I fall into that? And then he comes back out, the children are dead and he goes on with his life. Or should he go to prison? Because 
he killed two innocent children because of his own choices that he decided, you know, that made him feel important, that made him feel special. Maybe this, the children should have been more important than him. Uh, so I personally, uh, I'm sorry, after being barraged with people attacking me constantly all week long about how I'm part of uh, sex, sex trafficking and all this stuff, I'm starting to lose it with crazies. You know what I mean? If you want to be crazy, if you want to say, you want to start believing stuff that has absolutely no substance, then that's on you. That's on you. Uh, and again, I'm not against the idea that certain things you can say there's something something off about something that's happened uh, with the governmental stuff. There have been, government has been involved in doing some squirrely stuff. That is true. Our FBI has proven it. CIA has proven it. There's no, and every gov government across the world has had many squirrely people in them, you know, who do things. And sometimes they do things in groups and that's how it becomes a conspiracy. I'm not against all of that, but don't go with there if there's no valid proof, absolute support of that. Don't just start saying, well, this happened and therefore I'm going to connect it to this dot and then this dot and this dot. Oh, look what I've got. And if you could believe, <laughs> if you really believe that uh, lizards are controlling the world, go get help. Really, just just go get help before you end up with two dead children. It, you know, there's no excuse. There's absolutely no excuse for going down a road like that. Yeah, I would tend to agree with criminal profiler Pat Brown. And also, Pat Brown brings up an interesting question. Do the conspiracy land salespeople like David Icke bear any responsibility for this? Or, as some people I'm sure believe, would, these, would this same exact tragedy have happened absent that conspiracy theory? It's hard to know. Uh, obviously, anybody who would kill their own children must not be very mentally stable. Um, I, I, I don't know what would drive a parent to do that. Um, and we see uh, many examples of that lately. And I don't recall um, growing up hearing so many stories of parents killing, killing their own children. And maybe it's just the media saturation is so different now and the news cycle is so much faster with the advent of the internet, but I don't recall hearing so many stories of parents killing their own children, you know, in decades past that we do now. Now it seems like we hear something about that once a month, every few weeks. Um, and that is a disturbing thing to think about that parents apparently uh, are much quicker to go murder their own children. Why is that? Uh, I think that the internet certainly may be a causal factor in many of these things. Um, so I have some more to share in a letter uh, from jail. Matthew Taylor Coleman admits delusion in my own mind before child murders. Sitting in a cell in an undi undisclosed federal prison in California, Matthew Taylor Coleman wrote a two-page letter to a friend detailing how his thinking has changed in the 10 months since he allegedly killed his two children in Mexico with a spear fishing gun. In the letter, handwritten on lined notebook paper, Coleman addressed some of the alleged conspiratorial thinking, including his belief that his wife, Abby, had reptile DNA that she passed down to the couple's children, Kaleo, two, and Roxy, 10 months old. Coleman has been charged with two counts of foreign first-degree murder of United States nationals and has pleaded not guilty. He writes, I was deceived, Coleman wrote in a letter, which was viewed by people. I was deceiving myself. I know now that reptile DNA thing was a delusion in my own mind. I made myself believe something that wasn't there. And this uh, goes on to recount um, the story of, of him taking the children and murdering them. Authorities allege Coleman believed that the QAnon conspiracy theory, which holds the false belief that former President Donald Trump has secretly been battling a cabal of saint worshiping pedophiles at the highest ranks of political power and influence. Yeah, and uh, now Coleman is in jail with no access to conspiracy websites. In his letter, he explains that he's processing through his beliefs. I'm sorting this all through it all now, he wrote. There's a lot to unpack, but I have to figure out what I really believe. 
but I don't have access to information anymore. So I'm having to use my own mind to figure things out. And isn't it interesting that only after the murder, he suddenly, after the murder, he suddenly figures out that, uh, you know, he was mistaken. A little too late for those two innocent children who, by the way, you know, it is the responsibility of a parent of any child to protect and preserve them. And, you know, we're, there's just no words for how I feel about this man and this case. There is, there's just no words. I mean, what, what, what can you say about a man who reads too many conspiracy theories and suddenly decides that he is going to brutally murder his own two children with a spear fishing gun and then try to conceal the murder, leaving the bodies in a foreign country. Maybe he thought it would be harder to trace the murders back to him somehow. And what was he going to do after the murders? You know, where was he going? What was he going to do? Just go home and, oh, my children are missing. It's, it's mind boggling to me. Uh, you know, what was the plan here? I'm just going to murder my children and say they're missing. We'll report them missing somehow. What was he going to tell his wife about where the children were? She saw him load those children in the car and take them. And again, I think that the wife should be criminally charged with at least child negligence or, you know, child endangerment. She sees him loading the children in the car. He's saying he's going on a camping trip with them. And I agree with criminal profiler, Pat Brown. My wife and I were avid campers before children. We had uh, gone camping in tents all over, all over the place. Um, we had a, a van uh, decked out for, with a bed in the back of it for camping. But once the children arrived, you're not taking a 10 month old child and a two year old camping with you. Maybe a two year old by yourself if that's all you have, but you're not taking a 10 month old baby camping with you so does the mother in this case bear some criminal responsibility i believe that she does at least child endangerment she had to know that was not right when her child is being loaded into not a car seat but a box and what was she thinking did she call the authorities immediately after he left apparently not so yeah this is very disturbing now i mentioned that I could be incorrect in that I believe many of these reptilian alien conspiracies arrived somewhere around 1988, maybe early 90s. <clears throat> and I wondered, pardon me, about the origin of some of them. And I hate to say this, but so many uh, of these conspiracy land con artists, grifters, use <clears throat> pardon me, existing sources like fiction, like works of fiction. We have seen Corey Good and David Wilcock, for example, use things like Star Wars, Stargate, SG-1, uh, Babylon 5, and other science fiction series, literally Buck Rogers. They used Buck Rogers for a fake story they were selling. Um, so I believe a lot of this may have been rooted in science fiction. And let's think about this conspiracy for a while, for a moment at least. So there is a race of reptilian aliens, and they are either shapeshifters who disguise themselves as humans, or they have skin suits. They're trying to take over the world, or they do rule the world, and... They wear skin suits, skin suits, to disguise their real, true reptilian alien nature. If you listen to David Wilcock or Kerry Cassidy, they're trying to have sex with us and eat us, trying to eat us. Um, and they rule the world and they wear skin suits. And you may wonder, where have we heard that before? Well, I think I may have located the source. But one night, aboard the mothership, Donovan made a startling discovery. The operation is working perfectly. The visitors were lying. They were not like us. 
they were not our friends. Donovan rushed back to get his hot story on network television. But before the broadcast, the visitors commandeer the airwaves. The alien spokesman, John, announced to the world that Mike Donovan was a threat to society, as was anyone who questioned the visitors' mission of peace and universal friendship. Donovan tried to tell Christine. Mike, I work so closely with these people every day. You don't believe me, do you? Reptilian with tongues that... It's all true. I've seen it, Chris. Donovan's mother couldn't be convinced. That's the most outrageous story I've ever heard. He became a fugitive. The aliens were determined to kill him before he spread the truth. But soon more people began rebelling against the visitor's stranglehold. However, anyone who tried to escape was taken prisoner. One person did listen to Donovan. Why don't you tell us what you know? Juliet Parrish and her small group of resistors were the first not to doubt his incredible story. Believe me. Juliet had a plan for the group to fight back. We have to arm ourselves. Donovan was caught and taken to see the alien commander, Diana. You'll soon have no more worries, Mr. Donovan. Diana had special plans to brainwash Donovan herself. But a few of the aliens were different and wanted to see Donovan escape. He first needed a weapon and a uniform. You sure don't look like an iguana. What? Bad taste. These aliens knew Donovan could help them in return. Some of us, a very few of us, just don't believe in what our leader's doing. Martin, an alien turncoat rebel, revealed the visitor's earthly mission. It was not to fill the mothership tanks with special chemicals. You are here to take the water. And Donovan learned that his nine-year-old boy was one of millions held in special chambers to be used as food. My son, is in here somewhere? Juliet Parrish and the resistance rebels managed to win their first battle. V for victory became their symbol. But they know. The war is just beginning. And for one young girl left pregnant with this alien's child, a nightmare is on its way. Tonight, the saga continues as V, the final battle, begins. Yeah, V, the final battle. So much of this reptilian alien conspiracy was foretold in 1984 with uh, this particular science fiction anthology, I guess I would call it, because there were two, it was a mini-series, there were two sort of two-hour television movie mini-series, and then 19 episodes of a television show, hour-long television show. And we see many facets of this alien, reptilian overlord conspiracy perfectly in this science fiction series. They're reptilian aliens, they wear skin suits, they're disguising themselves as humans, they are controlling the world, and they don't have humanity's best interests at heart. So is it a big leap or jump to think that a conspiracy land grifter a few years after seeing that would say, this sounds like a great conspiracy theory, and you take that and sell it in books, but use, you know, earthly evidence, I guess, to uh, sort of help sell it. I think it's very probable that a lot of these reptilian alien conspiracies, reptilian alien stories came directly from V. Before V, I'm not aware of um, reptilian aliens being part of popular culture. Um, and by the way, I'm not saying I'm correct, but I'm just saying this is definitely one possibility of where many of these stories about reptilian aliens come from. We have seen full evidence that people like David Wilcock and Corey Good mine science fiction television shows and movies for their fake stories that they then use to sell to vulnerable people. So what's next uh, for Matthew Taylor Coleman. He is right now in an undisclosed California prison, which uh, I found interesting and I did make some phone calls. And what I found out is they're not disclosing what prison he's in because he has received many, many death threats, um, which I suppose is understandable. This man is very um, vilified and hated as 
rightly he should be for taking the lives of two young children, a 10 month old baby girl and a two year old baby boy. Um, and it's a real tragedy. And here we can see perfectly displayed the dangers of conspiracy theories and the dangers of the peddlers of conspiracy theories. Now, do I think that David Icke is losing any sleep over this? He was directly named by the defendant in this case, uh, Matthew Taylor Coleman. I don't think he's losing any sleep. I don't think he cares. I don't think he cares one little bit that a conspiracy theory that he promoted and sold may have been a causal factor in the murder of two children. And that will tell you something about the mindset of these people. Uh, I believe that many of them are sociopathic or psychopathic. They have, they display little or no empathy towards others, despite some of them, like Corey Good, claiming to be, have superpowered em empathy and be an intuitive empath. No, all they care about is the money that they're raking in from vulnerable people. Um, and all they care about is keeping that gravy train rolling with constant money flowing into them. We have seen it time and time again with people like David Wilcock, Corey Good, David Icke, and others. So until uh, Mr. Matthew Taylor Coleman is tried, it's an, enough to say that he is simply accused of these murders, but I believe that he will be convicted and I believe that he will receive either a life sentence or more appropriate in my mind is the death penalty. Um, I'm not generally real big on the death penalty, but in some very heinous cases like this, like the murder of an innocent child, I do believe that is an appropriate punishment. You forfeit your light, your right to life when you take the lives of someone else. Oh, and uh, so we will read our uh, super chats here. Uh, Totem R with a kind and generous $5 super chat says, just discovered your channel. Thank you for your work. Sent you an email. Looking forward to connecting. I'm a shaman, but I'm skeptical. And I did get your email. Thank you for that. I just haven't had a chance to reply to you. But thank you for your kindness, your generosity, and your support of the show. It is much, much appreciated. And by the way, we are a viewer-supported show. And um, we rely on and appreciate the support of those of you who value the content we create enough to throw a couple of bucks in our hat. Uh, one second here now. I'm trying to find my, uh, trying to find the other bumpers. Yes, I have found them. So uh, let me go and we'll read the rest of the super chats. I apologize to you early super chatters. Sometimes uh, during we do these presentations and it's uh, a bit of a distraction to stop every few minutes to read the super chat. So I appreciate your understanding, but we do read every single super chat that comes in and thank every single person for their kindness, their generosity and their support. So one second, I'll share my screen here and uh, let me do that, share my screen and thank all of you kind and generous benefactors. And let me take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters and the channel members as well. And for those that have asked, the Patreon is a buck a month and the becoming a channel member is five bucks a month. You get the same benefits, but on YouTube for the extra couple of bucks, you get uh, a YouTube channel member badge and a few other YouTube goodies. Um, so Totem R, we've read yours, just covered your channel. Thank you for your work. Sent you an email looking forward to connecting. I'm a shaman, but I'm skeptical. My flock is everywhere. The kind and generous $3 super chat and also with the kind and generous $2 super chat says, hi, Stephen, everyone praise the cash. And thank you for your super sticker purchase as well. And uh, spooky, that one was from yesterday. So uh, we're going to take a moment to remind you uh, that we are, like I said, a viewer supported show and we appreciate all your support. Here's our announcer, Ian, to let you know if you do enjoy our content and want to help us create more, how you can help.
Truth Seekers is a viewer-supported show. Wonderful people like you who enjoy this show send pledges in the form of Super Chats, Super Stickers, Super Thanks, PayPal, or Cash App. Instructions for how to help are in the description. You can also join our Patreon, and for as little as $1 a month, you can get extra content. Patreon supporters get a backstage pass, early access to all our production videos before they are distributed publicly, Stephen Cambion's music, private writings, a monthly show journal, and more. You can also become a YouTube channel member for $5 a month. A YouTube membership includes all of the Patreon benefits, plus a special members badge, priority reply to video comments, and the live chat, plus a monthly members only video. We thank you all, kind and generous benefactors, for supporting Truth Seekers. Thank you for your generosity and support. Thanks for being here. This is Truth Seekers with your host, Stephen Campion. Please rate, like, and comment on our videos or podcasts. If you are listening to an audio podcast, please rate us five stars to help us rise in the search rankings. If you are watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you're listening to an audio podcast, we love and appreciate you listeners, but you are missing the live tapings. All our shows are recorded live with video feed. We'd love you to come be a part of our live broadcasts and tapings for the podcast. Head on over to YouTube, click the search tool, the little magnifying glass, put Truth Seekers one word in the search bar, and hit enter. You'll see a strange and mysterious guy with sunglasses. That means you found the channel. Go there, smash the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to receive up-to-date info on our YouTube channel. We welcome you to be a part of our live taping and our chat room during the live broadcasts. Seek the truth. Speak the truth. This is Truth Seekers. Truth Seekers. Okay, so uh, I've got a little more time to share with you. So we'll take comments and questions from the live chat. Any Kurtz is here a bit late, but that's what the replays are for. It says, oh, we still on part two. Yes, this is for those just joining us, uh, including Annie Kurtz. This is part two of our Murder in UFO Land series. And by the way, there will be at least two more in this series. We are building different series of shows which we will be doing playlists for there's a few playlists available on our youtube channel right now tony v is here holding down the facebook live chat thank you tony v i see you over there and uh, we love and appreciate everyone listening no matter or watching no matter where you're listening or watching from including that we are right now broadcasting on facebook youtube twitch twitter rumble D Live and Odyssey. Um, I did get a message about our bit shoot, and I uh, apologize. We're still working things out. A few bugs with our distribution system. I'm supposed to uh, generally. There's supposed to be sort of a web bot program we're using that will upload to the alt sites after the broadcast. Some issue with that, so I'll be manually fixing. I believe the BitChute channel is behind, as is the Odyssey channel. And the Odyssey, uh, there's some issue with the live streams. Once the live stream ends, we'll be fixing that shortly. 
As far as all you audio podcast listeners, we're seeing a huge uptick, uptick of downloads, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of audio podcast downloads a day. I don't know why it's happening, but I'm glad it is. And I just want to recognize all of you people, kind people in audio podcast, uh, listening and downloading those episodes. We see and appreciate you. I've gotten a lot of messages from people who drive for a living, whether it be Uber or uh, Amazon or UPS or driving a, uh, a semi. Uh, we've got a bunch of you guys, you truckers out there, hardworking people working hard for their family every day. Listening to us makes me feel great. Thanks to all of you. Uh, for doing that. We see Jason has just become a YouTube channel member. And by the way, if you become a channel member during a live broadcast, I get a notice of that and we will be calling it out and thanking every new member. So thank you, Jason. You can go to the community tab and there's a bunch of uh, videos, extra goodies. That's what you get for being a Patreon supporter or for being a channel member extra goodies. Um, and um, by the way, I'll be posting later tonight to Patreon and to the channel member section, some extra goodies. We have character screen tests for our upcoming Honest UFO conference, which we will be uh, doing as soon as humanly possible. I think sometime in the next couple of weeks, it's going to be an eight hour special truth seekers event. You're all very welcome. Hope you all join us for that. Uh, so welcome, Jason. Thanks for becoming a member and supporting the show. We appreciate you, and thank you for your generosity and support. The Gorilla Gamer is here. Hey, oh, brother, go check out Gorilla Gamer's channel. He gets a plug from me. Uh, and by the way, I hope you're, uh, oh, there we go, Super Kick City becoming a YouTube channel member. This is turning into a great night for supporters of Truth Seekers, and we love and appreciate all of you. Thank you, Super Kick City. Uh, yeah. And so questions or comments for me, those of you who are veterans here know this, but if you're new here, I have a paralyzed eye. I am uh, visually impaired. So it really does help if you have a comment or a question for me that you put it in all capital letters and uh, I will share it on the screen. Super Kick City says, woo, let's go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stormcrow says, did you say eight hours? Damn. Well, occasionally, Storm Crow, we do these Truth Seeker special events. I believe the last one was on the 75th anniversary of Roswell, and that one was over eight hours as well. It is a big, long, live, well, it's not live. It's a big, long premiere video, and I'm in the live chat for the entire thing, uh, thanking everybody for their support. So the last one that we did was the Roswell 75th anniversary special. Uh, and you can look in our, just search Roswell in our channel and you'll find that one over eight hours of interviews with all the world's leading experts on the Roswell crash of 1947. We interviewed Don Schmidt and Walter Bosley, alien scientist, uh, Tom Carey, Kevin Randall, and more. Uh, Cal Korf was involved in that. There was many, many people. We gathered together all the world's leading experts on the Roswell event, whether that was a skeptic who says it's just a weather balloon or a believer uh, who believed that it was aliens. I believe that we had a few more people that believed it was aliens, but hey, uh, you can make up your own mind after you watch the entire thing. Right. I thought it was important that we hear from all people who are Roswell experts so that we can make up our mind. And Aaron Flores is here and becoming a YouTube member. So this turned out to be a great night for YouTube memberships. We thank and uh, we thank every one of you for your generosity and your support of the show. It is much, much appreciated. And we just need 555 more of you to sign up. And by the way, I was aware somebody uh, posted that earlier to our channel was showing 6,666 subscribers, but we've since passed that. So uh, <laughs> yeah, just a little weird to log into YouTube and see 666 as your subscriber count, but we'll take it. And we are on the march to 10,000 view or 10,000 subscribers. So one of the things that I would ask if you really want to support the show, uh, like all good YouTubers will say, please do 
like and share these videos. It really, really does help us to raise in the YouTube search algorithms. And also, I know that everyone within the sound of my voice, everyone listening, everyone watching, you have a weird friend like you. I know you do. I have plenty of weirdo friends. My favorite friends are the weird ones. So please do copy our channel address and send it to your friend. Ask them to subscribe uh, if they enjoy content like we produce. And please do like and share these videos. It really, really does help. I see all you people retweeting when I post a show on Twitter or sharing it when I post it on Facebook. Faithfully really does help, and thanks to all of you who are sharing our content, because that increases our reach, and I need a bigger bullhorn. I really do. So please do like and share these videos. It really does help us, and we appreciate all of you who are doing that very much. Now, uh, tomorrow night, I will be back at 9 p.m. Eastern. I just talked to Spooky, and uh, we were going to have a... a a night off tomorrow and then a, and then another show but i have uh ample we have plenty of shows lined up and interesting including some incredible guests and interviews some people you uh will really enjoy hearing from we're going to be bringing them here as well uh totem r says it's up to 6.67k yes and i'm on the march to 10,000 subscribers i'm trying to get to 10,000 because um I have had many people that I know with very large YouTube channels uh, of 100,000 or more tell me that once you hit the 10,000, things become a little easier. It's not so much of a grind. I'm looking forward to that. So we're on the we're on the race to 10,000. Uh, but I have to say that based on our social blade, this month has been incredible for subscribers. And welcome all you new subscribers. I think we're at four or 500 subscribers for the month of December. And it's not over yet. There's still a few more days. So please do, if you haven't already, it costs nothing, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and you too will know when we're doing a live taping for the podcast and you are most welcome. And I see also that we passed another major milestone and that is that we have passed 700,000 views. And uh, I gotta say, that's a pretty amazing pretty amazing accomplishment. My last YouTube channel had over a million views, but that took me 10 years. Uh, we've been here about two years, so uh, I'm way ahead of my previous efforts, right? <laughs> and I'm so glad to see, right? Tony V says, we want 10,000 people who want the truth. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great, right? Uh, but I am told by many, many different uh, content creators that passed that already that uh it gets supposed to get easier after 10,000 subscribers and that uh things don't take quite as long to get another you know the the rush to get you know sometimes it can take months to get another 1,000 subscribers but once you hit 10k it's supposed to be a little more downhill i'm i'm hopeful for that because we have worked very hard uh here i have worked very hard spooky's worked very hard and um you know it would be easy. Spooky's here and says, hi, I was summoned. Not really. You must have just heard your name. Every time I mention Spooky, she just shows up. Yeah. Great. Cicada Smasher says, it's perfectly normal to speculate on Roswell aliens, but it's psychopathic and narcissistic. If someone speculates, they might be reptilian aliens, greys, okay, lizards, bad. Well, I see we have many believers of this reptilian alien conspiracy. And what I would say is I don't know that anybody's ever been murdered over the Roswell conspiracy, but I do know that at least four people have been murdered over this reptilian alien conspiracy, which is why it is viewed as dangerous to many people, including me. Now, my take on it is that this is not harmless fun when people are getting murdered over this. And we will have a uh, a few future stories. The next two stories are about people that murdered people over this reptilian alien conspiracy. And while I understand people uh, are interested in these topics, you know, I don't know, Cicada Smasher, what is the, what is the, what is the solution here? 
I am a firm believer in free speech. So I wouldn't want to say that David Icke or others aren't allowed to talk about these conspiracy theories if they're dangerous. But there's got to be some solution here. Like, what do we do when people are literally being murdered? I, and again, I'm not aware that anybody's ever been murdered over a Roswell mystery. But people, four, at least four humans that I know of, have been murdered over this reptilian alien conspiracy. My flock is everywhere. Another kind and generous 99 cents. Super sticker. Well, thank you for your kindness, generosity, and support. I uh, I appreciate your constant support. Longtime supporter of the show. Thank you for your for your conspiracy issue. The conspiracy issue. I'm sorry. I'm reading ahead. Thank you for your kindness, generosity, and support. My flock is everywhere. Okay. Sopranos fan says it's a crazy issue, not a reptilian issue. Yeah, and I agree with that. Many people would argue that these people were not mentally stable to begin with, and I can see evidence of that. But the next story that we're doing is on Sherry Schreiner, who pushed this. Sherry Schreiner is another person who pushed the alien Illuminati blood sacrifice sort of uh, conspiracy, and that led to another murder. Um, so, but these people that do this, I agree, Sopranos fan, they're not mentally stable to begin with, right? Totem B says free speech, yes, but people also need more cognitive critical thinking skills. Yeah, and that's critical thinking skills is something that should be taught in school, but it's not. Kind of like finance should be taught in school, but it's not, right? Cicada says, I'm not even a believer of it. My point is the man is a murderer. That is the problem, not gray or lizards. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I think... Um, you know, for all we know, he's just saying that that's why he killed his children, because he got caught. We, we don't really know in depth if he truly believed that, though I talked to one of a family friend who firmly told me that he firmly believed that his children and his wife may have reptilian DNA. They may be part of the Illuminati bloodline and that one might become he was saying that one of his children might be the antichrist because of the reptilian dna he was also uh, a kind of a bible thumper he carried a bible around with him in in some places interesting that he's a surfer also you would think a surfer would be a little more laid back and wouldn't be so apt or you know wouldn't be so paranoid and delusional that he would murder his own children but here we are david i caught a reptilian in a Bigfoot trap. I actually saw a picture. Yeah, if you believe that, I've got a bridge to sell you as well. Uh, you know, I do think, though, that these people that are selling these conspiracy theories are a bit psychopathic or sociopathic. They don't care. Once they get the money from the book sales, the DVDs, the conference appearances, whatever, they don't care if some crazy people take their conspiracy theories and use it as a basis for delusionally killing somebody. They don't care. As long as they get their money, their um, their money, they don't care. They just don't care what happens, right? And, uh, you know, I think some of these people are maybe considered criminally negligent because they have to know, especially people like Kerry Cassidy using ridiculous sources like a murderer, for her fake stories, they have to know the story's fake. They're just pushing it to make money. Totem R says, I know people who 100% genuinely believe this stuff and it's ruined their lives, energy workers, yoga teachers, etc. Yeah, that's interesting. It's very, very interesting that people from all walks of life are into this. I have a family member. He's convinced. He's convinced. You're wrong, Stephen. I can't believe you're so into conspiracy theories and you don't see the truth. Okay, if you say so. You know, Barack Obama is a shape-shifting lizard. Okay. And by the way, there used to be, for a long time, there was so-called proof of reptilian alien shape-shifting. And it would be that their eyes look reptilian in videos or change. And that was proven by a skeptic society to be due to digital compression. In other words, when a video file is compressed, it might screw things up with the eyes people's eyes look reptilian or cat-like. People were using that as proof of some kind of alien conspiracy theory. And I'm here to tell you, digital compression leaves artifacts or some effect on the video file. But that's 
that's the level that people will go to with the claiming proof. Well, look at that video. His his eyes change. He must be a reptilian shape shifting lizard. Not so. Digital compression. Mr. Ian is here and says, it's Wayne. He's slowly abducting people and giving them weird experiences on his Simpson oil. Funny you should mention that because Angeli, not Anjali, Angeli will be appearing at our first ever annual Honest UFO conference, right? And uh, that's going to be sometime in the next month. I appreciate it. My flock is everywhere with another kind and generous $2 super chat. Also, a uh, returning member of True Seekers, big time show supporter. Thank you. My flock is everywhere. So, Stephen praised the cash. Well, thank you for your kindness, generosity, and continued support of the show. It is much, much appreciated. JC Owens says, Yeah, all that stuff is where the funny mustache man does interact with all the lizard stuff. It is theosophy based belief. Theosophy, of course, does play a part in this. I truly believe that. And Mario's Taco is here, show member. Uh, thank you for being a member. Says, I want to say to the believers, if you can show us a reptilian guys just for evidence. Yeah, they never can, though. There's never real evidence. Not sure what happened with David Icke in 1991. Something very strange, according to him. Well, I'm sure there's all kinds of stories from David Icke. There are a troll that will troll you till you kill yourself. Okay. Uh, Totem R is here with another kind of generous $5 super chat says the hopium is the issue getting folks hooked on the light at the end of the tunnel magical thinking it's like religion I agree and uh, hopium is part of the QAnon conspiracy it's part of the reptilian overlord alien conspiracy it's it's all to give hope to the hopeless like oh are you upset that Donald Trump lost the election don't worry he's still the president it's so stupid i i look i love conspiracy theories and i love conspiracy land in general or i wouldn't be here however the the booing on stuff it was just so stupid and nothing that those drops said ever happened remember their arrests and hillary clinton's getting arrested none, none of that ever happened so i very quickly became disinterested in it other people other people have ruined their lives over these over these drops, literally ru ruin, ruined their lives over it. And what does it turn out to be? Some pig farmer having a laugh at everyone's expense, right? My flock is everywhere, says Stephen. You're welcome. Great. And Bob Marley says, uh, Ike takes a bit of lure from all different parts of the world. He then, he even says reptilians are Satanists just to drag religion in. Show me the money. <laughs> Dickhead, like, yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, I wonder if he heard about this murder and if he cares. I, I doubt he cares. He's it's not my fault. You know, I, I just sold all that garbage to people. I just made all that garbage up. If he believed it and killed people, it's, it's on him, you know? Yes. Yes, I agree. Tony V is here in the Facebook chat and says, but conspiracies have gone too far. I agree with you. They definitely have, you know, especially the Buanon thing, the 17th letter of the alphabet. It goes a little too far. Or let's talk about Pizzagate for a while. Uh, you know, that was a conspiracy theory. And someone literally walked into the pizza shop with an AK-47 or some assault rifle, as I recall, demanding to see the basement because he wanted to rescue those mole children. Right. It is, it is very, very interesting. Electromata is here and says, you are awesome bringing some light on these issues. Well, thank you for your kindness, generosity, and support of the show and for your kind words. We appreciate that. My flock for pet president, Pinzer for VP, vote today. I might vote for Pinzer, but not so much you. No. <laughs> and if you're conspiracy theorists, they need to lock you up, Chris Murphy, because... See, they are dangerous. Well, here's the problem, though, in that some conspiracy theories turn out to be true. For many, many years now, people have said that the CIA had some involvement in the murder of JFK. And uh, that was called a conspiracy theory. Now, it would appear uh, that we are on the verge of proving that to be an absolute fact. I believe that these documents... 
these JFK documents are being held back for a very important reason. And famously, Donald Trump said he, that he would release them all. But then he read them and said, oh, I can't release some of this. And he held them back. He even asked about it by Judge Napol Napoliano. And he said, and he said to him, if you knew what was in those documents, you wouldn't release them either. So there's something very sinister and very, very shocking in those remaining JFK documents. And I believe that uh, we have a right to know as American citizens. Those are our documents. They don't belong to anybody. Those, those are taxpayer funded records. Release them. Release them all and let the chips fall where they may. If the CIA was involved, we should know what their involvement was. I believe that it can be substantially proven that Leo Harvey Oswald had substantial ties to intelligence organizations, both in the United States and in Russia, which is strange. Um, and there's all kinds of conspiracy theories around the murder of JFK. But my point was, it's long been rumored that the CIA had some involvement in that. And the CIA said that was a conspiracy theory. But here we are. And it's becoming increasingly clear that uh, the CIA is responsible for holding back those documents. And I believe it's because it will paint them in a very, very damaging light. Yeah, Sopranos fan 11. JFK killed because he wanted to disclose UFOs. Some evidence suggests that. Yes, apparently, uh, apparently John F. Kennedy had some plans to share the UFO file with the Soviet Union. And many say that's one of the reasons that he was assassinated, because that was our highest level secret. All of the, the UFO files, some people call it. They didn't want him sharing that with a foreign adversary uh, like Russia. And therefore, in order to prevent him from doing that, killed him. There's also substantial and supportive evidence that JFK wanted to do a joint moon mission with the Soviet Union and cooperate together to get to the moon together. And for one reason or another, plans for that were scrubbed. Um, some people say that was a contributing factor as well. But uh, JFK did say that he was going to smash the CIA into a million pieces. Uh, yeah, and other things that he tried to do. Um, I believe it, maybe it's the DIA. I think the Defense Intelligence Agency was created by JFK because he did not trust the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. So he created his own intelligence agency. Um, and a lot of people say that the CIA is the real power behind the throne. But who knows, right? And my point was that sometimes conspiracy theories turn out to be true. The Gulf of Tonkin, that was a conspiracy theory for a while, that we did some kind of false flag event to justify going into Vietnam. That's no longer a conspiracy theory. It's historical fact. Look up the Gulf of Tonkin. Amy Collins says the CIA both dosed Lee Harvey Oswald when he was a Marine, and then they sent an asset to befriend him when he came back to the USA. I believe that you may be correct in that. I'm not very up, though, on the JFK assassination. In fact, just for the anniversary, sort of, I, uh, I watched, I, I had never seen it. I watched the JFK movie, and I thought that was very compelling evidence shown in that movie of some sort of conspiracy. There's just too many things that don't make sense about all those events. Um, and then we've got fingerprints, uh, the book depository of CIA assets and things. Uh, there's just too much around that event to be just some lone gunman, lone wolf. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And the magic bullet, look that up. I just, I mean, I've, I've fired guns. I have guns. Like, I couldn't get a bullet to do all that. And I don't think anybody can. Honestly, look at the magic bullet theory. It is just ridiculous. Uh, and But that's what we're told, and that's what we're supposed to believe. And if you question that, you're a conspiracy theorist. J.C. Owens is here and says, the JFK affair was the reason the CIA first used the label conspiracy theorist to refer to people outside official channels investigating it. Yeah, to discredit people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anthony Purcell is here and says, whatever happened to David Wilcox's airplane hangar and the flying car hoax? 
How did that end? He just disappeared to a cabin in the woods. I never hear the ending of that scam. And I don't believe that you will. He's going to do the super, he's going to do the, the, the Cosmic Con shuffle, Anthony Purcell. He shuffles off and disappears for a little while. He hasn't made a video in probably six months. And he's going to hope that everybody forgot about that batch of lies. And then he's going to give everybody a new batch of lies. That's how David Wilcox works. That's exactly how David Wilcox works. He puts out a bunch of stuff and then it all starts falling apart and people see through it as being fake. He shuffles off, takes a break for a while, and then he comes back with new bullshit to sell people. That's essentially uh, how it works, right? That's essentially how it works for him. Oh, one second. Let me just check something here. I just realized. I did. Okay. In my rush today, today was a bit of a rush. Uh, and by the way, uh, of uh, my uh, children are home with me all week. And uh, they're really raring to go. So if you should happen to hear some children screaming, you audio uh, experts and audiophiles, please don't complain. I live in a home with children. You know, there's nothing I can do. I have a door that closes, but, you know, two children, boys, six and ten, are pretty loud. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm hearing what sounds like elephants running around the living room and screaming. So you may hear some of that. And we have very sensitive microphone. If you do, I apologize, but my children are home with me all week. And I don't know why they never do this, but this week they decided they're sleeping in. They're sleeping until like 11 or noon or later. And that means they're up all night. It's great. <laughs> Some Christmas vacation, right? Uh, Lord Ludacris is here. Welcome, Lord Ludacris, says David will pop back up for the 2024 election. Yeah. He'll pop up eventually with new with new garbage to sell people. Chris says Wilcox New Scheme should be a Mars colony and apartment sell for three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars and thirty three cents a steal when you think about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Super Kick City says I think David Wilcox is actually psychologically unstable and sick at this point. He is the king of squirrels on YouTube. Watch his recent videos. Yeah, I have. He's talking to squirrels and he's taking baths in his own piss. That's a problem, Super Kick City. If you're taking baths in your own piss and saying that Archangel Michael told you to do that so you could get superpowers, some people, Super Kick City, have hypothesized that he is purposefully doing this because the authorities are somehow closing in on him for years and years and years of all of this, let's just say, less than credible business practices that he has and shady charity stuff and tax stuff and that the authorities are closing in. So he's setting up an insanity defense by saying that, you know, he's talking to angels who are telling him to take baths in his own piss. None of this makes any sense. Totem R is here and says his videos are so nuts. Reptilians ate my fingers, but used technology to regenerate them. Yeah, they, they, you know, according to him, they can just zip your head off. They can cut your head off, Totemar, and then just zip it back on like it never happened. And somehow people eat babies and then bring them back to life with this alien technology. It is the wildest, wackiest stuff that I've ever heard of. Cirrus A. Parsa of the AI organization. This guy was on Coast to Coast last night, and I did not believe a word of what he was saying. Pretty far out there, dude, in my opinion. Might want to have a look into the scam. Yeah, and by the way, we're working, Anthony Parcell, on a big story, a national scam that involves a lot of, oh boy. Um, it's probably the biggest, I think it's probably the biggest story that I've ever worked on. I've been slowly investigating it on my own. Um and uh, I hope to bring that to you soon. But you guys know that, um, I, I don't know what the right word for it is, maybe percolate. <laughs> like, I don't do stories quickly here. Uh, I started looking into tonight's story a few months ago. I slowly, methodically go through the stories, gather evidence, research. I try to interview people. I interviewed two people, actually, for this story just for background 
family friends of the uh, of the man who murdered these children. Um, so stories have to they take some time to to come to fruition here. Uh, I have to slowly do a lot of work in order to bring about the the story. You know, I like to. I don't like to talk about something unless I am as fully informed as I can be and can speak authoritatively on it. But anyway, we're working on this very big story um, that involves a national scam. There is a national scam going on and we've been slowly investigating it. And I should say slowly undercover investigating it. And boy, do I have some great stuff to share. And uh, I can't wait to get to that story. Chet. Uh, says in his latest book, David Wilcox said Pete Peterson verified everything Corey had said. Then Corey said he made up everything. Chet, are you talking about the Archangel book or the other one? Uh, oh, the Ascension Chronicles. Yeah, I saw that. There's a clip on my Twitter, by the way. Uh, you should you should follow me on Twitter. It's at Stephen Cambion, just my name, at Stephen Cambion. I'll put this down for a moment so you can see my name. No spaces at Stephen Camby and follow me on Twitter. Uh, we post a lot of material on my Twitter that is relevant to the stories we're discussing or to the uh, UFO scam squad, you know. Um, and there is a, a piece uh, from another podcast there where David Wilcock, yes, he says that Pete Peterson verified that Corey's telling the truth or his prophetic dreams verified that Corey's telling the truth. And then Corey said it's all fake. Great, great. So, yeah, nice catch, Chet. I noticed that. Tony V says, it's not going to be easy to keep up with the UFO scams. I know. Uh, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, Tony. I need five more of me. We need a clone of me. And, uh, yes, I am aware that clickbait extraordinaire Goofy uh, is talking more smack. And, and I love it. He puts my name in the title so that he can get views right and then he lies some more and some more and some more and by the way he he just slandered me and tried to damage my reputation more in that latest video but please don't go and watch it because that's what he wants he wants to put my name in the title so my audience goes over there to see what he has to say all he does is lie you can tell that Gufan is lying because his lips are moving. He said a bunch of stuff in that that are completely and totally provably false. And uh, I don't know that I want to waste any more time on that clown. And th what I love the most about him is that he wants to be respected, but nobody respects him because of who he works for, the biggest UFO scammers in this entire game. And... You will notice he never addresses any of the evidence that we have here. Then he says, we don't do any research. I'm the guy who nailed his ass to the wall for lying to his audience for a year and a half or however long, right? But we don't do enough research, right? And by the way, he is lying. He said that all these different people, well-known UFO celebrities are suing me. That is completely and totally false. Never been sued here. Never even been given a letter from the names that he mentioned. Never. They never even sent me a letter. So he is spreading false defamatory information about me in an effort to damage my reputation. And he's doing that with malicious intent. That's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem. Oh, no, he, he'll debate if I go on his channel so that he can grift for Super Chats. But what are we going to debate about? Uh, I have proven that this man lied about me 10 times in a previous video. And I've got 20 more. I can make another video, 20 more lies that Gufon told about Steve Cambion. You know, he's trying to push my buttons. He's trying to get to me. And uh, it's really not working because I can't do anything about a man who would just keep telling the same lie over and over again. He's back to... Third phase has, has done great work in the past five years. They're doing things the right way. If you, if you think that purposefully creating fake UFO videos or accepting purpose, purposely accepting and posting 100% provably fake manufactured 
made UFO videos as something strange or mysterious is the right way to do things, then great. You know, the one thing that does piss me off is that he's got a bunch of idiots sending him money to lie to them. And, and actually, I shouldn't say it that way. Maybe they're not aware, but you people sending him money should know you're paying him to lie to you. And I can prove that. So good job sending him money so that he can lie to you and lie about me. And by the way, I can prove that. We can prove that he continually lies while he's accepting money. It's great. It's great. It's a great business, you know. But, you know, I firmly believe that we do excellent work here. And, you know, him doing the Super Chat Shuffle every day, it, it, his show is piss poor. And I love what he does is he puts a big clickbait title on all his shows to get people to click on it. And then he does no work, nothing. And he has very little to say that's actually intelligent about what the title was about, but that was enough to get people to click on it. So that's all he cares about. And it's short term, it's churn them and burn them. That's what it is. He does not have long-term viewers or supporters. Uh, he turns and burns. That's what he does. People watch for a while. They go, boy, this guy sucks. He doesn't do any talk about not doing any research. Show it to me, Rich. Where's your research? Where is it? You've been doing this for 15 years. You don't have one big story that you researched or investigated or broke. Not one. Nothing. Nothing. You know, uh, when all is said and done, I will uh, walk away from this. And with my head held high that we did excellent work here. And for him to say otherwise shows how stupid he is because I built this. I didn't have a channel with 800,000 subscribers shoveling subscribers at me every month. I built this. And Spooky helped with the graphics and some other stuff. But we built this. He built nothing by himself. So, you know... And uh, I, I'm, I'm content that we do our due diligence here. By and large, we get the story right, right? He's got to disparage me. He doesn't want to talk about the evidence. He can't. He can't talk about all the evidence. There is two two-hour documentaries about Third Phase of Moon being fraudsters. And let's be clear, that's what it is. It's a form of fraud, pretending that something is a UFO when you made it and you know it's not a UFO. That's a form of fraud. And I guess the other thing that's disappointing is that YouTube, you know, it's supposed to be a community guideline strike to make fun of disabled people. It's supposed to be a community guideline strike to fat shame people. It's supposed to be a community guideline strike to do many things that he does over there. But I get it, YouTube it's, it's AI bots that are evaluating these things. Somebody fills out a report and says this, this person is uh, making fun of disabled people. An AI bot goes through it, doesn't understand it, doesn't give him the strike. Doesn't mean what he's doing is right. It means he hasn't been caught yet. But I believe that if all those clips were together and a human at YouTube reviewed that, he would no longer have a channel, you know, and... Uh, Again, all of this is an effort to disparage me, to discredit me. He never addressed any of the evidence. Not once, not once since this whole thing began did he address any of the evidence. Why doesn't he talk about the fact that he knew that Third Phase of Moon were posting fake videos? And we showed the proof of that. Why doesn't he, why doesn't he talk about that? No, he wants to talk about my wife, my children, my disability, right? Because that's all he has. He's a sad, bitter, angry little man who has failed at everything in life. And the only reason he's still hanging on is because he has a channel with 800,000 subscribers shoveling new people for him to churn and burn for Super Chats. That's the only reason he's still hanging on. If he didn't have that, he would be getting 300 views a day if he's lucky, right? But, you know, this is some of the things I'm learning, you have to learn to accept the things you can't change. And I can't change that some idiot is going to go on YouTube and talk about my wife, my ch children, my disability, because, you know, 
I don't know why. Why would you do that? Or use me and my to scam people to click on his video. That's what he's got to do. He's and listen, every time that he puts my name in a title in his in his shitty videos, his numbers jump up. And that's because people here go over to see what it's about or see what it is. I would highly encourage you, don't do it. Don't play his game. Not a single penny of YouTube money should come from my supporters here to that clown. And uh, it is what it is, you know. Good for him living in his parents' trailer. Real winner in life. By the way, Rich, why did you get divorced? You really want to play dirty? It's great. <laughs> be Baker. Yeah, maybe, you know, who knows? But I, I am fascinated by the fact that those people that watch him are living in some delusional fantasy land where Rich is a UFO expert, right? It's it's exactly like the people who live in a delusional fantasy land listening to somebody like Corey Good, Secret Space Program Insider. Uh, except Rich's LARP live action role play is to pretend that he's a UFO expert, right? Okay. He's a UFO expert that works for the biggest fraud UFO channel. They're the fraud UFO channel. Congratulations. You work for the biggest fraud UFO channel, Rich. You know, I, I don't understand why people would watch him or think that he has some particular insight into this thing, you know? Because he works for frauds. And I'm sorry. He calls out everybody else. He's even, And by the way, he's calling me the biggest liar in, in ufology or something like that. The, the man who has been caught lying time and time and time again, lying to his audience. That's what I love, too. His audience is giving him money so that he can lie to them. If you want the truth, come here. If you want to be lied to and pay somebody to lie to you, go over there. I don't want you here. All right. We'll take a few more questions here, comments. Did someone marry him? No. Yeah. Patty Wilhelm. Amy, guess all we could do is keep reporting them. Yeah, I, I don't I don't really I, I haven't told anybody to, you know, I don't care. Unless YouTube is compliant. No, I think it's just he's not a big enough fish for them to worry about, you know. He's a tiny YouTube channel. How can people keep watching in the face of such proof of fraud? Amazing. Yeah, I mean I agree with you. You know, and by the way, he's blaming me for his show sucking now. That's great. He says that he can show that his show took a down a downswell after we did our thing. And he's blaming me, but he's not acknowledging that maybe people tuned out of him or tuned off his shitty show because they don't like being lied to. And we showed everybody that he was lying to everybody. Something he should already know is people don't like being lied to. And they don't want to pay you or support your show when it can be easily proven that you lie to your audience. He lies to his audience. I can prove it. We did prove it. He lies to his audience constantly. And he's going to call me a liar. By the way, did he present any evidence or proof that I've ever lied to my audience? Absolutely not. All he did was spread new rumors that are false. I think he said that Jimmy Church tried to sue me, uh, Linda Moulton Hale tried to sue me, David uh, Richard Dolan tried to sue me. That never happened. Never. Never got any communications from those three. So he is spreading absolutely, completely false information, rumors and speculation that he has no basis in, re there's no basis in reality for that. And, um, uh, you know, anybody can go ask those three. No, they never sent me a letter. No, they never tried to sue me. Not, not those three. So, you know, he's got to, he's got, that's what he's got to do. He's back is against the wall and his shitty show is failing. So what he's got to do is he's got to paint me as the bad guy. I would have a, a lot of respect for him if he actually went through those documentaries and tried to argue against all of the evidence there's a goddamn mountain of evidence that third phase of moon 
are 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 absolute scammers. They've been scamming people for decades with fake shit, and we can prove it, right? So, you know, he doesn't have a leg to stand on. The only play he has left, every time, this is my curse for Gufon. every time he disparages me, the first thing that's going to pop in people's head is, Steve Cambion was right about him. Steve Cambion was right about third phase. That's why he's attacking his character. That's why he's telling everybody Steve Cambion is a liar. He has not and will never address any of the evidence. He's got to gloss over that and create new lies, new stuff to, to make me the bad guy. Hey, Rich, you work for scammers, Rich. You work for UFO scammers, fraudsters, Rich. That's who you work for. Now he's saying that I can't prove they pay him. You are so stupid, Rich. I have the clip of you explaining exactly how third phase pays you. It's It just boggles the mind. But I will tell you this. There are some things in life that are worthy of my time. Rich is not one of them. You know, I have a nonverbal autistic child and most of my time should be spent helping him and, you know, my family. Some idiot living in his mom's trailer in the backyard, you know, divorced loser. By the way, his wife divorced him because he could never make her come. Divorced loser living in his mom's trailer, lying about me on the Internet because we made him look exactly like what he is. A UFO scammer, just like his bosses, who lies to people for a living. He lies to people begging them for money on the internet. That's who Rich is. And in the long span of things of my life, you know, I, listen, I have had some incredible enemies. I got to tell you, <laughs> <coughs> I have had some enemies that did scare me. I have had some enemies that were very intelligent, very devious, very cunning, very capable, right? Rich, it's 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 no comparison. He's not, he's 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 just too stupid to do this with me because every time he tries, we have evidence, we have facts, we make him look like a smack ass. And then he goes away for a little while, licks his wounds, right? Comes back blaming me for all his problems but it is what it is. And, uh, oh, my point being that he's just not worth my time. You know, he's not, he's not a big fish in this thing. So I'm not going to waste my time on some scammer loser that works for the biggest UFO scam channel ever that has ever existed. Right. <laughs> Madam Two Swords says Rich shared video footage of what he said was drone footage, but it was just him walking around on a beach looking for a toilet. He is a very weird guy. Yeah, well, you know, he wants to live, he lives in a delusional fantasy land where he's a UFO expert. By the way, I've never said I am, don't claim to be, but he claims to be, you know, because of all his research and, and the best thing that he's gotten in 12 years, I think he said. He's been doing this 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day. The best thing that he has is a picture of a fucking security dome camera. That's great, Rich. You wasted 12 years of your life and all you've got is a fucking security dome camera. You, you childish idiot. Yeah. Um, so my point is some people are just not worth wasting the time on. You know, like I think that he'll implode eventually or he'll do something he'll do something and uh third phase will cut him loose and then he'll be left to his own devices and he'll fail miserably without them shoveling subscribers at him every month right but it is what it is you know like honestly i don't assign my value by youtube numbers he does he's very obsessed with numbers right and who's who's beating who or who's getting more subscribers or who's getting more views. He's obsessed with that. I, I, 
I really, you know, it's great when the numbers are good, but I would do this if there was three people watching, you know, so it's just a waste of time paying attention to this idiot, Stephen. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Tony V, F those UFO experts. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, and thank you. My flock is everywhere is sharing the UFO. Uh, Rich wants to be the third twin. Sharing the uh, documentary. You go to our Odyssey channel, and there's two free documentaries about all the fake fraud garbage that Third Phase of Moon has peddled over the years, and Rich signs off on it. Remember this. Always remember that Rich from Goofon says the Third Phase of Moon does great work. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And to choose this, this is the hill I'm going to die on. Third Phase of Moon does incredible work. They do things the right way. Scamming people with fake videos is not the right way, Rich. All they do is shovel garbage into the UFO community, and you uh, are a garbage peddler by association. Yeah, but my curse for Rich really is that every time he talks shit on me, the first thing that pops in people's head is, Steve Campbell was right about third phase. That's why he's pissed off. That's what I think, except for the really stupid people who don't know better. And by the way, why is third phase like, peddled towards children basically or like teenagers or young people it's because you know somebody who has a fully developed brain would see right through their bullshit that's why i am reminded of the king crimson song three of a perfect pair i know that song i know that song i used to have a guitar player of king crimson never been a fan but i got to hear lots of king crimson thanks to that guitar player i had right Alien Outlaw is here and says, trying too hard to be cool. Yeah. Um, Wally's World says, I do it with eight people watching. Well, God bless you. I did too for a long, long time. It gets better. Wally's World, just keep consistently. You got to water that garden. If you want the garden to grow, you got to just tend the garden every day. Go there and water the garden, whether you feel like doing it or not. Just keep watering the garden, and eventually that guardian will grow. <laughs> Chris says, I interviewed all Rich's old girlfriends, no comes reported. Well, that's why he hates women, because no woman wants him. Yeah, he's a woman hater. You can hear it when he gets pissed off about other, like women doing a UFO show. He gets so pissed off. He hates women. That's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. Alien scientist is here just as we're wrapping things up. Um Good to see you there, Jeremy. And uh, I'm sorry I missed your show. I got a lot going on. Jeremy understands because he's got children. You know, it's hell week for me. They're they're home, dude, all day, all night. And then I'm not going to the cabin on the weekends because of the holidays, Christmas and New Year's just so happen to fall back to back on weekends. Plus, there's bad weather there. So I've been up to my eyeballs in children. There is far too much children around here for me, Jeremy. <laughs> so I apologize I didn't make it to your to your show or is it still upcoming? I'm sorry, I gotta look at your message again. If it's still upcoming, I'll do it. Otherwise I'll come on sometime in the near future. Yeah, uh and check out Alien Scientist channel. Um he's one of the good guys left, and he better stay a good guy because <laughs> I've got I got I can count them on one hand, the good guys left in this thing, right? All right, I'll give you a call tomorrow, Jeremy. He's headed to bed. Call me tomorrow if you can. I will do that. Absolutely. All right, Super Kick City says, women don't really like me. I never thought to hate them for it. Yeah, I, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Amy Collins says, alien scientists had a heck of a review of Corbell's Lazar documentary. Oh, I did miss it. Oh, I'm going to watch it, though, Amy Collins, because that's got to be funny. Uh, did he, I think he like got physicists and like real scientists to review. <laughs> oh, that has to be a laugh riot garbage Corbell documentary, right? Yeah. Well, what can I say, friends? We're uh, coming up on two and a half hours. We're going to, we're going to pop on out of here. I appreciate everybody for being here. I want to thank you, Super Chatters and uh, Super Sticker Purchasers. Oh, the PayPal. I always, sometimes I forget. I apologize. 
Uh, you can also support our show through PayPal and instructions on how to do that are in the description of the video. We read every single super chat and we read every single PayPal. So if you send a PayPal, make sure you add a note and then and any message you want me to read and I will read it on air for you and thank you for your kindness, generosity and support. Oh, here we go. December 28th. We have Sweet Caroline with a kind and generous $30. Thanks very much. Uh, and she says, thanks for another great show, Sweet Caroline. Thank you for your kindness, generosity, and support of the show. Longtime show supporter. The PayPal MVP is Sweet Caroline. Thank you, Sweet Caroline. I really appreciate your continued support. And happy holidays to all. A lot of people sent me uh, PayPals or Super Chats and said, happy holidays. I want to thank all of you. All that's going into Till and uh, being put to the greater good. Yeah, we're doing things for the greater good here. And we appreciate all of you supporting the show. So uh, we will be back tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I've got some exciting new stuff coming up. Uh, I want to welcome all of you new subscribers. We've got like four or 500 new subscribers this month. Welcome all of you. Please check out our back catalog. And I am getting a lot of messages asking or telling me, you should cover this. And we already did. Or uh, do you have a show about this? So the search bar is great. So just hit the magnifying glass from our main channel and put whatever you want in there. David Wilcock, Bob Lazar, Jeremy Corbell, Richard Dolan, anybody you want to know more about, Kerry Cassidy, we've probably covered that person here, and you can get our take on uh, whatever it is that they're selling. Uh, so use the search bar. Otherwise, I have replied to everybody, and uh, we want to welcome all the new subscribers. Had a great month this month, four or 500. They're our best, I think that's probably our best month for new subscribers yet. Uh, we want to welcome all of you, and uh, you are most welcome. I'm glad that you all found me. I can't tell you how glad I am that uh, we've had such a bang-up month here. Also, probably our greatest month for views in the history of Truth Seekers. So thank you all for uh, for being here and uh, being a part of the journey. The journey continues tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and we'll be back. Oh, my flock is everywhere. Is that another one? Super sticker. Thank you for your kindness, generosity, and support. Much, much appreciated. Glad I didn't miss it. Longtime show supporter, my flock is everywhere. Uh, thank you for your kindness, generosity. Thank you all, you Patreon supporters. Thank you, channel members. Thank you, Super Chatters, PayPalers. We appreciate all of you. And uh, thanks for supporting somebody that's not lying to his audience like Rich from Goofon. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to pray that that guy gets over. He's obviously got some issues, right? He's talking about I have issues. I mean, generally, I'm a pretty well-rounded, uh, stable person, you know? Do I get pissed off sometimes? Yes, but it's called righteous indignation. And I think a, a little bit of that is healthy for you. Um, yeah. So that's all I got for you, friends. Until next time, my name is Stephen Cambion. Good night. And God bless all of you. <laughs>